who is God. John 4, 24. The Bible says that God is spirit. Therefore, those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We can know God through his word because John chapter 1, verse 1 shows us the pathway that God is the word. You can never know God outside his word. All there is to know about God is found in his word. Um, I answer this question on said, the creator God lives in heaven. Um, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, um, says that Bereshith Elohim bara veth ashmaim veth ash. There is a God that creates and nobody knows his beginning and his end. He existed before our world. So where he lives, according to the word of God, is known as heaven. So there is a difference between Muslims and Islam. Um, Islam is a religion. Not every Muslim is a practitioner of Islamic religion. For instance, the president of, the former president of Ghana, um, President John Dramani Mahama, migrate from a Muslim tribe, but he's a Christian. Now, our vice president, Dr. Bahud Bahumia, also migrate from a Muslim tribe, but he's into Islamic religion. So one can be a Muslim and not into Islam. One can be a Muslim and yet a Christian or Islam. Islam is a religion. Yes, Muslim is a tribe. Islam is the religion. Let's get this clear. You can call followers of Islam, for instance, followers of Christ, you call them Christians. Um, you can call followers of um, um, Islam, Muslim, because Muslim is a tribe. Like we have Gans, Ashantis, Fantis, Eves. Muslim is a tribe. So let's get that one clear. I think we can leave that to our viewers to do a lot of research. But my stand, I know that Muslims, not all Muslims are, you know, there's a difference between Islam and Muslim. You can be a boy and yet be married. From the scripture I quoted, Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And I was saying that there is a difference, a vast difference between a man and a boy. And I said, number one, God put man in the garden. The first thing that God asked the man was to work and keep. Work and keep. So real men have responsibility of working. So you can be grown and whatever, whatever. You can take decisions for whatever. If you are not working, that responsibility as a husband, how do you take care of it? Family is going to depend on you. You are no more a single man. You Would you now marry and go and look for your mother or a friend and beg for money to take care of your wife? No, you are not ready for marriage. The word of God is not interpreted, interpreted by what you think. The word of God interprets itself. The first qualification is that you must be working. You must earn something. Even if you are not earning 100 million, you must be earning one CD. You must be earning. You must be working and earning. You, whatever you you must be earning something to take care. Who will pay your hospital bill? When you rent, who will pay the rent? When your wife is sick, who will take your wife to the hospital? Are you getting me? So that is what it means. God put man in the God. God knew this. So God gave man work to do. And God was paying man. Genesis, if you read 15, 16, 17 to 18, you will see. God put man in the garden and asked him to dress and keep. And God gave him charge over everything in the garden. And God said, he should eat it. Except one tree. That was salary. When you work, God said, eat everything. So if God put man in the garden, a man was not entitled to anything. That is why God himself didn't bring the woman as a wife to the man. Because the man was not in charge of anything. How is he going to take it? The garden here woman, she in here with the did Okay, so so I, I know where the confusion is. The conf I'm coming. The confusion is that, for instance, there is somebody who is 45 years or 50 years who doesn't have a work. 
and there is a young boy who is 18 years and is working. Am I saying that the one that is 15 years is a boy? <laughs> Certainly no. It's responsibility. There is somebody who may not have a work, but I say he has created a job. Are you getting me? But no matter your age, if you are not creating anything and you are always home, you are a boy. Don't run out. You are a boy. How would you eat? There is somebody who is not working, but he has what to eat. I get in the principle now. Somebody is not working, but oh no, no, he cannot work. He has what to eat. His money is working for him. Are you getting me? You can't say that person is a boy because he can take off any other thing. And truthfully, there are people who has money, but they are boys. He can buy you a car, take you to Dubai, do the all the lavish weddings, but he's a boy. So money is not the only qualification. I stated something. Boys are selfish. Men are selfless. There is somebody who has money who would want to change his wardrobe every month. But he doesn't even care about changing the wardrobe of the wife once a year. He can buy a nice shoe for himself, but he will never think about buying a nice shoe for the wife. You are not a man, you are a boy. Sometimes issues pops up and you will know by the way the person is handling the issue that Akra with the onion. He just was scanner. There are issues that matured men won't even talk about it. They will just ignore. But boys who want to talk about it, they hold offense. So the issue becomes blown out of proportion. My advice to Christianity, Psalm 14, verse 1, it says that only a fool says that there is no God. I believe in God. I can't force it on you. But I want to encourage you that seek him and know him. And you can know him by his word or connecting to a genuine man of God who knows God and he will guide you. But request that you will go through discipleship class if you are a first timer. Even the church you join doesn't have. Request, maybe because of it, they will have started. Request that they should take you through discipleship class so that you will know and get the fundamentals of Christianity. And personally, I've enjoyed myself from the studio to this session with um, the Revelation crew. You will see clearly that they have genuine intentions for what they do. I am not offended. I'm so happy because no man of God knows everything. Their questions will give me a push to research into what I don't know. I speak to what I know. And if you follow my, what, all everything I'm saying, what I don't know, I won't allow you to digress me. I speak to what I know. The rest, we can all go and research. So I want to encourage you that be a regular follower and viewer to Revelations. Thank you and God bless you.